Oh my gosh. We've taken our kids out of public school? That's awesome. Now what? So, my name is Laura Spradlin. I'm kind of uh, starting down a new path in life of being a homeschool mom and running a homeschool household. I have five children. Their ages are 26, 25, 21. 13 and 12 that spans two marriages and um, my three older children are out of the home two are married one has children so I have two darling angel grandchildren who I don't see very much because they live in another state my third is in college age she takes college classes and then my two youngest are still in the home they're the ones that obviously I'm going to be homeschooling and I have been since late October 2017 so five six months I never thought I would be homeschooling and pretty much um, we made our decision kind of um, quickly. Initially, they were in public school. My three oldest kids um, were total public school. I was a public school kid. Um, I am now 50, 50 years old. Midlife here. Hello, I plan to live beyond 100, so maybe I haven't reached midlife. I'm not sure. <laughs> but basically midlife here anticipating what retirement might look like and I'm suddenly homeschooling. I hear the dog barking. This is real life. Um, it was it was harder for my husband to decide to bring him home because we really didn't know what that looked like and you really aren't gonna know. <laughs> what it really looks like for you until you're really doing it because it looks different for everybody um, it's impossible to copy another family's homeschool life situation I've discovered um, because I like looking at models of success and emulating what someone else is doing but nobody's doing quite what I'm doing who I know personally and so I feel a little alone yet it's uh, not hard to find a other homeschool families <laughs> trying to figure out how to make this work as far as we just left public school we didn't really plan well what next I promise there's strength in numbers. If you seek out others, and in the beginning, I feel like I'm on the early edge, along with another, you know, there's a small population of us who are renegades against public school, well advanced into public school. When I first, like initially, the very first thing I did was I sought out um, peer groups on Facebook because that's where my um, primary sphere of acquaintances and socialization and um, just my sphere of influence was at was on Facebook and so I started looking for Facebook groups I found um, Christian homeschool moms 
Christian homeschool families. Um, I knew initially that we were going to use a Becca curriculum. And so I looked for a Becca homeschool groups. I found homeschool groups specific for the grades my children were in, which was sixth and eighth grade. But you can seek out Facebook group groups that are specific to the curriculum that you would like to learn more about. And that was a great way to start getting to know more. But I really ran into more people who were seeking information, less people who were really very knowledgeable. And so then I started, honestly, I started in with the curriculum that we were committed to. And that's not where I'm going with this video though. Um, I really have a top 10, a top 10 list of things to do when you have taken the leap to um, cut out public school or even private school and join the homeschool family sector, <laughs> the homeschool family movement, because it's, it's moving and growing at a very rapid pace. Um, when I very first became a homeschooling mom and I joined those Facebook peer groups just to find a peer group, oh my gosh, it seemed like there were dozens of people per day just in those Facebook groups who were joining and saying, I'm here, we cut the cord, we took the leap, we left public school or private school, quite a few of them, and and here we are and we know not what we're doing, <laughs> except that the private school we were at used a Becca and so, so were we. And that's what we were doing too. But there were dozens, uh, uh, every day, more and more and more people. And then the violence in the school started in Florida and some other kind of high profile violent things happened, shootings and stuff. And oh my gosh, even more people started um, saying, we're done with public school. So what do we say to this mass exodus of people who are leaving the public schools? and coming to homeschool, I have a top 10. Not in any specific order, but I have a list of 10 things that I feel maybe would have been great for me to know at the time that we were taking the leap. Item number one, check your state laws and guidelines in regard to um, homeschool regulation. The Homeschool Legal Defense Association, which is hslda.com or org, I'm not sure, I will link it below, has a list, state-by-state state list, that will send you to the proper state for you. I would go in, I went and picked Kansas and it sent me to the proper page that had the information and the guidelines about um, what our state guidelines are. Number two, you will make mistakes. Better yet, instead of calling it mistakes, you will change your mind about things, about almost everything, about your routine, about your curriculum, about how you um, define your children, how you define yourself, what you think is the way it is in the beginning, it's all going to change. Number three, don't be a slave to the calendar. The thing that led me to learning more about how to decipher the rules for our state was when I started feeling a little panicky about counting school days because in our rules it says that the kids have to be schooled for something like a hundred and 80 school days. I don't even remember because at this point I no longer care. Our Rebecca curriculum was set up for 170 lessons. At the point where we should have been 
in about the 90s, we were still in the 60s or the high 50s in lesson numbers. And I started panicking. I was thinking the homeschool police were going to come <laughs> and knock on our door and say, sorry, you failed. You didn't keep up or the Abeka police or something somehow because on the Abeka homeschool page, there were moms going, well, we just finished a hundred, you know, less than 120 today. That lesson is everyone else on. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we're only on lesson 60. Uh. And then that, st that started worrying me. Like, what do you do if you don't reach 170 lessons by the end of school? What is the end of school? And some, you know, families who were a lot more experienced than me were like, well, you just, you just let it go. You don't cover every lesson in every book and you just don't stress about it. And I was like, I don't, I don't understand because we just came from an environment, a public school where you get X number of sick days. There's excused and unexcused. There's a lot of rules. I'm not a rule breaker <laughs> and I don't speed in my car. I mean, like what? I, I don't want to get in trouble for not teaching my kids all these lessons. And, and, and what do we do? I mean, I was worried. And so then that led me to researching our state rules a little closer and finding that it really defines it as the majority of X number of days that um, the reasonable, I think is what actually the, the terminology is, the reasonable majority. We live in Kansas, every state is different. Find out your state rules and then dig down <laughs> and find the, the real, um, here's what they really mean kind of rules. There's some states real tight, some states real easy, and I think Kansas is one of those real easy states. Number four, the decision to homeschool will create more change in your life than you expect. The first thing I had to do was back off from some, some other commitments. I had one volunteer position that I um, had to resign from immediately. I had another one that I'm still maintaining that is still, it's only one day a week for an hour and a half, but it's a school day. And I still, some days, some weeks, I'm just like, I may be giving this up at some point. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm going to choose my kids over I'm just gonna choose serving my children over serving in this volunteer position if I have to. But the truth is I take my children with me. I count it as school time. I mean, it's, it's extracurricular really, what they do with me on that day. And um, so because they go with me, it's something that I'm not quite ready to scrub, but um, we do have to back off from some of our other commitments. Um, kids are in school being supervised by teachers for a reason. Kids are kids. And we have a different situation we in our family have a different situation than, let's say, a family who has been homeschooling their children since, you know, since birth virtually. Some families are like that. And, and they know already because they've been homeschooling for years. When their kids are born, they already know they're going to homeschool them. They're brought up in that environment. Those kids are raised. At a certain age, they start letting loose a little bit of, here's what you do. And those kids start doing more independent work. My kids aren't there. 
my kids are not there. And we tried that. And, and I learned pretty fast that that's not working. At least not at my home with my kids. And every kid in every home is different. And every parent, every parent who is guiding their children through this is different too. Every relationship too. So um, if your kids weren't raised being homeschooled since the very beginning and you're just bringing them home from middle school, high school age, uh, I wouldn't just trust them to just say, okay, so here's your work, here's your online class, um, go ahead and do it and I trust you and um, I'll see you at graduation. I'm paying for it, but I have a job to go to. Um, there are some families who the primary person who's teaching does have a job, but you may have to make some adjustments. Either adjustments to your homeschool life or schedule, adjustments to what you do with your kids in the day, I don't know. Every family is different. I'm blessed that I get to be staying at home and I had to quit volunteer jobs um, to stay home or to just be home a little bit more with my kids. All right, so that was number four and it was really long, sorry. Number five, research curriculum. And then start figuring out what your teaching style is. When I very first told a friend of mine that I wanted to be homeschooling or that I planned and expected and intended to, she was like, oh, well, what's your teaching style? Are you Charlotte Mason, um, eclectic, uh, classical, uh, all of the, and I was like, eh, no, I'm nothing. I'm not any of those things. I'm a Becca. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I can be right now. That's all I know. And so we, we purchased a Becca. We brought the big boxes into the house. We unpacked them. The girls said they were familiar with this, that, and the other thing. And so we started from there. It wasn't until later. And I'll tell about this at another time. Like the, why did we stop using a Becca? That's another video. But if I could have had someone tell me in advance, don't rush into a curriculum. Bring those kids home for a while. And there's something called de-schooling. I'm not even gonna really, really de address de-schooling. You can look it up. <laughs> If you really want to know but I recommend start researching curriculum everything you hear about in the beginning is going to sound like a foreign language because you're gonna be like what the heck is Char who's Charlotte Mason or what I mean because it's a thing but it's a person um, there are so many curriculum types research the different types and and begin you know you're gonna come across something that really gives you more like a paragraph that describes it. I thought I'd really had a major breakthrough when I found something that had paragraphs describing these different um, teaching styles and learning styles. And I like presented this thing to Emmeline and Lila, to my two daughters and my husband. And they're like, oh, Emmeline and Lila were all like, oh, well, unschooling, that's for us. <laughs> that sounds amazing. And so, um, you know, talking to them was helpful, but then um, doing more research of finding videos. That's where I began. I began actually researching unschooling, which led me to YouTube. And I started following some unschooling parents, but then parents who were unschooling but saying, but I use some elements of Charlotte Mason really well, what's that and so I just like kept a scratch pad by the computer and just kept writing more and more notes what's Charlotte Mason well, okay what's this what's this what's that what's this 
classical conversations. What is all these different curriculum names? And so I was just like confused because I didn't know. Um, it, it literally was like a foreign language. And then there's eclectic homeschooling that takes little elements from all these different teaching styles. And so um, research the curriculum. Don't rush into buying curriculum. If there's any way I can rescue you from that, because we spend a lot of money that I'll be able to recover some of by um, reselling some of our textbooks and stuff, but uh, nothing close to what our actual investment was in the curriculum that we decided we didn't really, was not a fit for our family. Um, it is an amazing curriculum if it is a good fit for your family's learning and teaching style. It was not great for us. Um, number six, kind of tags along to what I've already been saying, seek others who've been doing each style and then don't just re rely on a one paragraph description of what a teaching and learning style is. Uh, research it, find other people who've been doing it because you're gonna find that nobody's doing it exactly the same and you won't do it the same as anyone else. It was really helpful for me to just begin by researching um, notebooking, lap booking, um, eclectic homeschooling because I really got just so many different ideas from all the different um, people who do all the different things. Um, it, that was pretty fascinating. Um, number seven, when you first bring your children home and they are used to a very rigorous schedule, you are used to booting them out of the door around 7.30 in the morning so they can be at school at eight, then your time is your own, or maybe you then have a part-time job or I'm not sure what all your schedule is, but now things are completely different. Use this time not to hit the ground running inside your own home. You're at home. Stay in your pajamas for a while. Let them get up a little late, maybe the first few days. Start figuring out what your rhythm is and it takes time to figure out your own rhythm. It takes really a lot of time. I'm not sure that we've entirely figured ours out and we've been doing this five or six months. But take time to connect with your kids. It's shocking how you learn how you're, you don't know your kids, especially when they are um, public school, they've been schooled and taught by someone else and as involved as you think that you are, you probably don't really, really, really know their learning style. But use this time to connect with your kids as a family. Get to know their learning style. Talk to them. Ask them what did they love about school? What did they hate about school in each class? What was their favorite thing about learning. Remember that. And then once you've been doing something for a while, ask them again because they're starting to get to know new things to like, dislike, and reflect back on previous times. Play together, talk together, read together. Find out what they like reading, what they like listening to. Number eight, you will need to set some boundaries. At least we did. Now that we're homeschooling, Saturday is still the free day, unless they've lost their privileges for some reason. Uh, and Monday through Friday, our screen time rule is no screen time from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, because I like to be schooling by nine. No non-school related screen time. So I allow them to use 
a computer if they need to make a list, write a paper, you know, write something on the computer, type something up, but generally our work is handwritten. Um, if they have to research something, uh, they can use a computer strictly for that purpose. We do allow music sometimes. I don't really like the distraction of music while we're having teaching time, but I will permit music. It just is very, I'm very selective about it. But um, set, set some boundaries. Need to have some bedtime and need to get up and start by a certain time. Even if you're kind of having a de-schooling period, you want them to get up and start at a certain time. Every house is gonna be a little different about the rules of getting dressed, when you shower and things like that. But um, that's our household. It's no screen time nine to four. We usually are trying to turn the lights out by 9.30 p.m. and school starts at nine. Um, number nine. If you have one of these upper grade level students, uh, before really nailing down a curriculum to get started with and defining a grade level for especially math, evaluate them. Find out where their gaps, their educational or retention gaps may be specifically in um, even reading. If I, if I wasn't really confident that my girls were very good readers, I would be evaluating. I may even still do that. Um, I have used just recently a website called mobymax.com, M-O-B-Y-M-A-X.com, and evaluated <laughs> not just my daughters, but also my husband and I. Um, on math skills and none of us tested as high as we thought that we should in the math skills. So the girls and I actually all three <laughs> will be doing some math review because I'm a perfect example of I took math all the way through my senior year of high school. I, I got out of my last math class at semester time my senior year because I was feeling it so badly. But basically starting in third grade, third grade, I was barely passing math. The thing is that I don't want my kids turning out like me getting through the end of high school and really should have been reviewing <laughs> pre-algebra again. I could have done so much better if I'd reviewed and been um, doing better in, in my earlier um, years in 7th, 8th, ninth grade math. But I was barely passing and I just kept progressing on to the more I kept advancing to the more progressively difficult classes, but I didn't have the foundation. So if you are having a student who is coming out of an upper grade or getting ready to even begin high school, evaluate them. Figure out if maybe you need to start them at eighth grade math or something like that. I'm going to tell in another video what our plan is for math next year. I'm kind of excited about it. But for now, we're going to be um, working on our specific skills that we're lacking on Moby Max. Um, and number 10, don't forget, as the teacher and parent, of these students who you are the primary guide in life and education, 
don't forget to focus on your own health. Your mental health, your physical health, as well as the relationships around you, your marriage, your faith life, to spend time with other moms. Don't forget about your hobbies. I hate to say how long it's been since I have picked up my knitting. Just because I've been focusing on school. This will, you can get very overwhelmed and I mean, you might stop showering and eating for how much research you might think you need to do to do well at guiding and serving your children. But if you forget about self-care, if you're going down the tubes, you can't you, you can't be your best you to be the best homeschool parent, mom or dad. Because I know it's not all homeschool moms out there, even though almost everything is directed at women in homeschool subject areas, because we're still dealing with expectations of a traditional family. But uh, don't forget that you need to pursue some joy of your own separate from the children, as joyful as I know they are most of the time. <laughs> and as much joy as I'm finding in getting to know my younger daughters in a new way that I never have before. Like, truly, it's it's been a surprisingly wonderful experience so far. Um, so I'm just going to leave it at that for now. And um, if you want to continue following along with our adventures, please subscribe and click like and um, be part of our tribe of people who are seeking the best for our kids. And um, just take care of every little thing and I'll see you next time.